So we're staying in the same drawing, our O3 Elevations 2D house drawing. We've created the new layers, we've applied the new layers. Now, what we're going to look at is initially hatching the areas of the slab and the wall in the elevation. Now, the reason we're going to do this is at the moment, it all looks a bit bland, dare I say it. And we're going to just make sure that our elevations highlight nicely with a bit of hatching so that the hatching works and it just makes the wall look like a wall and it makes the slab look like a slab. So let's look at the wall area first. Now we don't need to worry about creating the boundaries because where the walls are obviously sitting on top of the slab by way of the AutoCAD lines, there's a nice hatch boundary in there anyway. So we're going to make sure that we're on the right layer first. Now the good thing is I set it up on the quick access toolbar so I can jump up here and we want elevation hatch, that one there. So you've got hatch and don't forget we've also got a fill as well but we'll worry about the fill later. So elevation hatch first of all, like that. Now the hatch that we're doing is the wall hatch. The slab itself I'm going to worry about with a solid fill, but we'll look at that later. So hatching first. So we need to go into the hatch command, obviously, and create a nice hatch pattern and make sure that the hatch scale is appropriate to the wall and in context. We don't want great big bricks a meter long, for example. So I'm gonna jump into the hatch command. It's over here on the draw panel. Click on the little fly out here and I'm going to select hatch. Now the hatch in later versions of AutoCAD all comes up here in the ribbon. Just be aware of that and you've got a contextual tab there, hatch creation. Now I'm going to go and look at the hatch patterns here. And if you come down and scroll down the list, you will see that there's some nice ones here. There's ARB816, which is a nice brick pattern. And if you keep going down, you'll see that there's quite a few there. There's Brick Standard, that one there as well. There's lots of different ones available. I'm just going to go for the B816, that one there, like so. So I'm going to select that particular pattern. Now, if I hover over this area right now, it looks very, very orange. That's because I need to change the hatch scale. Remember, we're drawing this full size in model space, and the hatch scale at the moment is set to one here in the properties. So what we wanna do is change that to a nice value, change it to say 20 initially. Now, this is a little bit of a black art, and if you work with known numbers that you've used in the past, you can normally gauge how the hatch needs to look. Now, bear in mind, you're not creating a hatch pattern where the bricks are exactly the right size. Hatching is indicative. If you want to draw each brick in, actual size, brick by brick, be my guest, but it will take a long time. The hatching, the whole idea is that you're denoting a brickwork pattern. The actual brickwork itself would obviously look different in real life. So if I hover over that now and set that to 20 there, press enter first, I hasten to add, so that the 20 goes in. And then if you hover now, you'll see that you've got a nice brickwork pattern that looks reasonable and in context. So roughly speaking, every single one of those bricks is about brickwork size. If you're happy with that, just click once and the hatch goes in like so, and you can see the hatch boundary highlights quite nicely. So if I move away from that now and just hit escape or press enter, that's done. And you'll see the ribbon returns back to the home tab in my case. So we've got a nice brickwork pattern in place. Now, we also need to look at the elevation fill layer now. So I'm going to come up here like so and we've got elevation fill. Now I'm going to use the fill on the slab at the bottom and I'm also going to use the fill behind the brickwork as well. Let me show you what I mean. Elevation fill first. Now what I can do here is if I go to the draw panel again and click here I've got gradient or boundary. Now I can use a gradient fill if I want to. It's still hatching, but can you see it gives you a nice faded color if you want it to. So if I click on gradient now, I need to pick the colors that I want. Now you'll notice that I pick the colors here. It doesn't matter about the color of the layer. So I'm gonna pick a nice dark gray and then pick a very pale gray. I might even go white with this actually, to be honest. And can you see it gives me a nice graded linear pattern there. So if I now hover down here like that, I get a nice graded pattern there for the slab and I click like so and then I press enter to finish and there's my slab looking nice and gray. But it's not actually using that color of the elevation fill pattern. Can you see that? That's like a greeny yellow up here in the layers. So it's using the layer but it's not actually using the color properties of the layer for a gradient fill which makes it look rather professional I have to say. 
Okay, so we've applied the hatching and the fill there. So what we're going to look at in the next video is how we apply that fill to the wall as well.